In history, for the first time, a spacecraft had the courage to venture into the sun's atmosphere. This extraordinary feat by the Parker Solar Probe will be remembered forever because no metal can withstand such extreme heat and no toughest stone can endure it. So, the question arises, why doesn't the Parker Solar Probe melt in such scorching conditions? It operates flawlessly, even in temperatures of thousands of degrees Celsius. Let's explore the details. Back in the early 1900s, scientists conducting research on the sun noticed a peculiar phenomenon. They were studying the wavelengths of light emitted from the sun and its corresponding colors. This work was done using spectrographs from the comfort of the Earth. It was revealed that the color and wavelength of light have a direct connection to the sun's temperature. The results presented a mystery that remained unresolved to this day. They discovered that while the sun's surface temperature is around 5,500 degrees Celsius, its outermost atmospheric layer, known as the corona, reaches an astonishing temperature exceeding 500,000 degrees Celsius. This is over 100 times hotter than the surface of the sun. It's similar to feeling more heat when moving away from a fire. This peculiar phenomenon has puzzled scientists for the past century. Usually, this layer remains hidden in the sun's light and can only be observed during a solar eclipse or with the help of a chronograph sunshade. After NASA's establishment in 1958, several space missions were launched, one after another, with satellites and spacecraft venturing into space. However, to understand this unique phenomenon of the sun's corona, it was necessary to send a probe that could explore and analyze what was happening there. The probe would need to study the rays emitted from the sun at temperatures of 500,000 degrees Celsius. But, clearly, this was no easy task, considering the tremendous heat involved. Iron melts at around 1,500 degrees Celsius, while tungsten, the toughest metal on Earth, melts at 3,422 degrees Celsius. So, it's evident that both metals would immediately melt in the scorching environment of the sun. Now, imagine the situation in the corona layer, where temperatures are millions of degrees. This presented a major challenge. Designing and developing the Parker Solar Probe was already a complex task, but reaching the sun posed an even greater challenge. Getting close to the sun, which holds our solar system's planets in its gravitational grip, is extremely difficult. First and foremost, we must understand that if we want to bring a satellite back to Earth from its orbit, we need to reduce its speed so that Earth's gravity can attract it. Similarly, if we want to send it to another planet instead of Earth, we need to increase its speed so that it can escape Earth's orbit. Let's assume we want to send a spacecraft to Mars. It would be initially launched into Earth's orbit using a rocket and then, at the right time, at the right angle, and with the right speed, it would be sent out of Earth's orbit. Escaping Earth's orbit is a highly energy-consuming task. Rockets can bring the spacecraft to Earth's orbit, but they cannot be used once in space. Therefore, small rockets attached to the spacecraft are used to gradually increase its speed and move it away from Earth's orbit. Mars is relatively close to Earth in comparison to the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers away from Earth. Therefore, the angle at which the spacecraft is launched is not as extreme. However, the distance between the Sun and Earth is 150 million kilometers. Therefore, to bring a spacecraft into the Sun's orbit after leaving Earth's orbit, a large angle and a significant amount of energy is required. Building a rocket with enough power and energy for such a task has not been achieved yet. NASA engineers made the decision to send the Parker probe to Venus before heading towards the Sun. Venus, the second planet in our solar system, has lower gravity that can be utilized to increase the Parker probe speed. However, there was a challenge. Venus is a smaller planet with less gravity. To achieve the required speed for the Parker probe to approach the Sun, it had to complete 24 orbits around Venus. Each orbit would provide an opportunity to conduct research on the Sun, totaling 900 hours of research over the course of eight years. On August 12, 2018, the Parker Solar Probe was launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. NASA had prepared an eight-year plan for this mission, including 24 orbits around Venus to reach the closest point to the Sun. Each orbit takes approximately 37 hours, providing a chance to study the Sun. On April 28, 2021, 
NASA confirmed that the Parker probe had successfully entered the Sun's corona layer during its eighth orbit. The fact that the corona is mysteriously 100 times hotter than the Sun's surface was verified by the Parker probe. However, the question remains, what force is responsible for heating the corona layer beyond the Sun's surface, and ongoing research is focused on this. Now, let's come back to our main question, why doesn't the Parker Solar Probe melt in such extreme heat? The Parker Solar Probe is equipped with a heat shield on the side facing the Sun. This heat shield is made of carbon foam, which is not your ordinary foam. It has been specially designed by the Ultramet company to absorb the intense heat from the sun. The foam is 97% empty space from the inside, making it more effective in protecting the heat shield. Additionally, a layer of carbon composite has been applied, made from a mixture of graphite and resin. This mixture is superheated to transform it into the purest form of carbon. As we know, carbon has excellent heat conductivity. Furthermore, the side of the heat shield facing the sun is coated with white ceramic paint to reflect the majority of the sun's light before it enters. Apart from the heat shield, the rest of the Parker Solar Probe is designed to constantly stay in the shield's shadow. Despite all these measures, the Parker Probe can withstand temperatures up to 2,500 degrees Celsius, while the temperature of the sun's corona reaches 500,000 degrees Celsius. Understanding how it can withstand such extreme temperatures is quite simple. According to the laws of thermodynamics, heat requires a medium to transfer. Just like on Earth, during summers, the particles and vapors in the air carry heat within themselves, which is why we feel the heat even during the night. If the particles were fewer, heat wouldn't travel as easily. For example, putting your hand in boiling water will cause an immediate burn, whereas putting your hand in a 300 degrees Celsius oven and pulling it out immediately won't cause any harm. This is only possible because the molecules of water come into direct contact with us, whereas nothing in the oven touches us. Experts say that the heat on Parker Solar Probe's heat shield reaches 1,200 degrees Celsius, while the temperature on the side not exposed to the sun's light drops to negative values because there are no particles to transfer the heat. This is the reason why the Parker Solar Probe does not melt despite being so close to the sun. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us for more fascinating content like this.